Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, hey, Kathy, uh, here we are on uh, Friday, and uh, we just had a fantastic uh, guest day yesterday uh, with Mike Shero, who's the uh, leader and CEO of uh, this great ministry called C12. And what a, what a great uh, honor it was to have him share his story of, uh, you know, he and, and uh, his wife and his Christian walk, and then how uh, he came into that role uh, right. of, being, of being this leader that is, you know, God's man at this time. Uh, and the wonderful ministry they're doing around the country yeah. and now around yeah. the world. Uh, and he talked about abiding and the importance that he has with that. And he's actually teaching uh, some courses uh, that we have online. Um, and uh, I can uh, actually throw that up. Uh, I haven't done that often, but our website uh, is uh, www.afjministry.com. Um, and you can go to that website and... Uh, click on the online school, um, and then that gives you all the courses that we have. And Mike, Mike is teaching one of those uh, right. to us. To us, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I I was thinking just the other day that we haven't really brought that up in a little while. And um, Dan was just meeting with a friend this week, in fact, who's another C12 member, yep. um, who has been watching the uh, the broadcast and really enjoying it, and is wanting to go through abide and. Um, Dan was just telling him, you know, this is a great opportunity. He's got some friends who want to go through it yeah. to, you know, for them to get together, get yep. the on online course yep. and actually go through it. So those of you who are hearing things on this podcast that you're like, I want more, I want more of that. I need to know a little more. It's on there actually. So, you know, that, that website Rich put up, check that out because there's a lot of courses. I will say personally, there's not one on there that has not had a big impact on my life. Yeah. And so they're well worth, well worth taking the time to go through and they're great for small groups. Yeah. They're fantastic. So, for small groups. you know, great place to just go deeper with all of these yep. things if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So we encourage you to do that. Um, so, um, you know, we had, we had uh, left on Wednesday, uh, this <laughs> discussion of, uh, be angry and do not sin. Mm -hmm. Um, and we kind of took a, what I call a side rail. Uh, we were, we were in the middle of, talking about abiding, talking about uh, f the role of faith in abiding. Um, and we had this question come up about, you know, what is sin really? And then um, how do you uh, be angry and do not sin, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that most people don't do well at. Um, right. So we've had that discussion. Um, and Kathy and I can appreciate, uh, as you're even listening to that, you can, you're looking at your situation. Mm -hmm. And saying, boy, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's ever going to change. I've, I've done all kinds of stuff and I've had, you know, the church do stuff and my Christian group do stuff and tell me stuff. And I've read these verses before and um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, and actually it produces when we're approaching it that way, Kathy, is uh, and, and that's how we tend to look at the word is uh, actually it's oppressive. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's just, well, Rich and Kathy, you just told us all the things that I can't do. Right. Um, and that have not been a reality for me. And haven't been so a reality for I me. I haven't experienced this. So there's, there's a heaviness, heaviness to that. Um, and mm -hmm. I can appreciate that. Uh, was that way for me uh, as I was learning this? People that I disciple and work with, um, it starts out with this type of stuff. They're always, mm -hmm. they're always coming with a deep sadness, with a deep mm -hmm. uh, resignation of, I'm a believer. I thought, I thought, you know, God was going to be different in my life. And my situations just aren't that good. Um, right. And it's hard. And I don't see any way out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's when I say, I understand. Uh, would you be willing to learn that there, there is a different way? Uh, and it's, mm -hmm. it's this aspect called abiding. Because remember, it's abiding in the vine. It's abiding in the relationship, not in right. Bible study. Uh, right. 
uh, it has to go further than that because it has to become applicable and what God is speaking to me and the wisdom that he gives me and the things that mm-hmm. he does to fulfill it. Um, and by the way, that's what we were getting into uh, on this aspect of faith mm-hmm. uh, is as he now uh, gives you these truths, um, let's say we talked about, uh, you know, be angry and do not sin. Okay, well, we read truths. Right. Um, and it was, okay, uh, that's nice. But the two questions that God's going to ask us is, do you believe it? Mm-hmm. And are you experiencing it? Right. Um, and that's where the abiding takes it further. Uh, mm-hmm. Because if you just stop and said, okay, fine, I studied those verses. Um, I do understand them. Can I pull it off? Eh, probably not. Uh, but I guess uh, it's just hypothetical. Uh, mm-hmm. And God says, no, um, I want to take you now to faith uh, so that you believe it. Uh, and, and remember, I'm the author and finisher of faith. Right. So I, I do it by speaking. So I'm going to give you mm-hmm. rhema from these verses on, on anger, for example. And now let me give you the faith to believe it by what? You abiding you journaling, you processing, you taking these verses and say, so you said that um, I can go to forgiveness uh, mm-hmm. in my heart. Okay, teach me that. Uh, may you right. give me that. Here's, here's where I struggle with that. Uh, mm-hmm. and, you pr- and you stay with it. Uh, and so, stay with it in an authentic way so that you let him really minister to every part of that hurt. I know. Well, when you say when you say authentic, what do you what are you thinking of there? What do you what do you, what does that remind you of? It just I think of um, that we can fool ourselves. <laughs> but, you know, really, we we can deceive ourselves into thinking that we've moved on to forgiveness, or that we really um, have dealt with something, or that we're understanding or experiencing something. And the reality is that we haven't. And so, not being afraid. You know, I think sometimes we also think that God's afraid of our tough questions. Yeah. <laughs> and he's not. He's no. he's not afraid of our tough questions. In fact, it's in that place where some of the best healing happens. That's right. So I think that's what I'm saying really and be be authentic is don't fool yourself. If you're not, you know, if you're not really getting it, just keep asking him and and ask him to show you where it's coming from, why you're struggling with it, you know, what it is that's keeping you from stepping into that. You know, there's, there's lots of questions that could come there just from a real authentic place. Right. All right. And, um, uh, and, and see that we could illustrate this, uh, really simply, um, be angry and do not sin. Mm -hmm. So you read that and you say, well, I know I'm not supposed to go to sin and God doesn't like sin. So, um, I'll just tell him that I'm not angry anymore. Mm. Um, because, uh, it's up to me to overlook all this. Uh, and so I'm not going to be angry. I'm not angry. Um, and you, and, and being, not being authentic, see, would be, well, what God wants to hear from me is that I'm not angry and I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any hard hardness. Um, so I write that, um, okay, Mm -hmm. I will, I will dialogue with God around what I think he wants me to hear. Mm-hmm. And and God says, actually, what I want you to do is be authentic. And why don't you just share where you are? Right. So that right. so that I'm really I'm really angry about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know I've gone to sin. I've been in the flesh. OK, I get mm-hmm. that. Um, so this is where I'm at and I'm struggling and I've tried and I've tried and I've tried and nothing works and I'm hopeless and I'm resigned and it's heavy. Great. Write it all down. Mm-hmm. Um and now you get into the word and, and say, okay, what do you have to say about that? Uh, and he says that um, I will uh, do the work so that no one else some word comes out of your mouth. I will get the work of how you can forgive somebody. Mm-hmm. I will do the work of resolving this issue that is real to you. And by the way, right. le- legitimate. Walk with me to carry it to resolution. Um, mm-hmm. Now the key about that, uh, and this is important, um, some people like to stay in their deep stuff and actually not get resolution. Mm. So all they talk That's a about, good point. all they talk That's about, really and I have people like that, uh, that have, that I've attempted to disciple 
Uh, I said, well, here's the word. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the word says. And the answer is, yeah, but this, 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 and this happens, you know, and I'm, right. I'm, I'm upset. And okay, we'll get in the word. Next time we get on the phone, did you get in the word? No, but, but this stuff, you know, is awful, awful, mm. awful, awful, awful. Um, well, they're not taking it to God. See, they're not, they're not mm -hmm. letting God work and say, okay, let me take my words, which are spirit and life, and start to work in your heart. Um, right. And you react and to that. like, you know, we've, we've talked about that one-way conversation. When you go to God in prayer and you just dump and then you say, amen, I'm out. <laughs> and he's left sitting there saying, but I had something to say. Right. And we've got to come to him authentically with things, but then give him room and space to respond right. and expect a response and then come under that response. Right, right. And that's where, remember, we talked about... Um, you got to get those words in your heart. You got to pray those mm -hmm. words, you know, pray the promises. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said that I can be angry and not sin. Right. Would, would you please work that in me? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I receive that and it's possible. Not that you can do it on your own, but you're going to pray that God fulfill, you know, yeah. what, what he's doing. Um, yeah, because it's, it's a matter of uh, the opportunity uh, to walk with him. And, he, and see, he always does it by imitation. Mm -hmm. uh, so he says, um, in order for you to experience what I promised you, mm -hmm. you have to walk with me. Right. Um, and if you, have a, if you don't have a heart to go, I'm not going to force it. And, and I'll let you, uh, what I call, wander around, mm -hmm. uh, experiencing the hardship of life when all you got to do is say, could I please go with you? Okay, right. we, and we have actually a great verse that says this uh, and describes it so that we get that in perspective about faith. Uh, so it's Hebrews 3, 15 to 19. Um, the context here is uh, after they had crossed the Red Sea uh, with Moses and he had let, you know, the Pharaoh had let his people go, uh, they were saved. Uh, mm -hmm. And Pharaoh couldn't attack them anymore and they were free from Pharaoh. Um, so that, that would be the New Testament equivalent of being saved. Uh, then God said, my will, my promise is to take you into the land of Canaan and we're going to defeat the enemy that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will deliver to you this beautiful place. Uh, and by the way, it's going to be bountiful. Uh, you're not going to have any poor people. You're going to have um, great uh, peace. And all these mm -hmm. nations are never going to come against you uh, mm -hmm. because I'm giving you this called the promised land or my promises, which is how we would look at it in a New Testament way, is he's going to speak promises to me. So um, that's what he said to these two million uh, people that had, had gone mm -hmm. across the Red Sea. Um, and he gave them this promise. Well, there's something that they did that now negated the fulfillment of it. And you can read that in, uh, in uh, Hebrews 3, 15 to 19. It says, as it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses and with whom he provoked for 40 years? <laughs> Excuse me. Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter? his rest, but to those who were disobedient. So we see that they were unable to enter. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Yep. So um, he makes a couple of interesting statements in there um, that uh, today, uh, and the Greek word there is now, uh, you're going to hear my voice. Today... As you hear my voice, I'm going to be speaking. So in the now, uh, as I'm speaking to you, uh, it says, don't harden your hearts um, as they did in rebellion. Okay, uh, let's try to understand that. What, what did they do that hardened their hearts? Uh, as they were, they were being invited to go to the promised land, what did they say? Well, Maybe some of them said they didn't even want to go because they were comfortable where they were at. So there was that side of it. And I think there were some who simply didn't really fully believe that he was going to take them there. Right. Uh, 
Uh, no, that that was possible for them, that that was really all that it, he said it was. Yeah, and yeah. see, the hardening of the heart was uh, they went to the natural. They went to the mm. flesh. They went to the logic. The logic, yeah. Uh, of, oh, this is, this is going to be difficult. This nation that's there uh, in mm -hmm. uh, Canaan has never been defeated. And they're really right. strong, and they're way, way, way stronger than us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to lose. Uh, our conclusion is we're going to lose. Um, and actually, they're, uh, uh, and they go through this, and you can even read this in, in uh, Exodus and Numbers. They, remember, they were under hard labor in uh, mm -hmm. Egypt. Um, and they said, now that we're here in the desert, which is an awful place <laughs> to be. Uh, they have very short memories. <laughs> yeah. They said, um, wouldn't it be better if we went back to Egypt under that mm -hmm. awful situation? Because I've determined that's better than here. And therefore, what they said is this. You mm -hmm. can read this in Numbers uh, chapter 14, 1 to 4. It says, why did God bring us here to kill us? Mm. Uh, well, they hardened their heart uh, right. because they concluded uh, I've got this terrible situation. Uh, Kathy and I have talked about, you mm -hmm. know, be angry and do not sin. And we know, a lot of you listening, uh, that you have awful situations. Um, mm -hmm. It's not easy and it's a problem. And you've had it for a long time. And you could say, I just don't see it mm -hmm. ever working out. So basically, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what they said. We're not willing to go. Um, and mm -hmm. in, in verse... Uh, 19, it says that uh, they could not go because of their unbelief. Um, mm -hmm. And the word there is refusal to be persuaded of what God has to say is true. Mm. Uh, not that they struggled with, oh, man, this seems difficult. And are we going to really get there? And are you going to really fulfill it? And God said, I don't mind me being the finisher of faith. I've got to persuade you. I've got to discuss with you. I've got to show you that what I say is real. And I know mm -hmm. that you are struggling with that. That's, that's right. okay. Um, uh, even the story that, that you brought up, uh, I think a couple of times ago of uh, where they couldn't cast out that uh, man's sons, uh, uh, the demonic. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, you know, Jesus said, all things are possible to them, to them that believe. And the guy says, I believe help my unbelief. Right. Um, I kind of believe, but I really don't. Could you get me to the finish line? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the Israelites, uh, see, they just said, we're not going. We're mm -hmm. not willing to talk about it any further. We're, we're staying um, right. and, and we're going to go. Okay, so it says that God was uh, angry with them mm -hmm. for how many years, Kathy? 40 years. 40 years. <laughs> um, that, uh, now, as you think about that, mm -hmm. what was it about that that made God angry for 40 years? What was it? What was his heart? Yeah, he had so much more for them. He knew what he had for them, the lives that he had planned, the abundance, the promises, what he wanted to fulfill. He delights in his children and he wanted to give them these things and they wouldn't stay with him long enough to get there right? and right. believe that it would happen. Right. And so they wandered around mm -hmm. uh, in the desert, never more than 11 miles from the promised land. Uh, That's crazy when you think yeah, about it. Yeah, uh, living in an awful place for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and never having uh, anything. And there's a couple interesting mm -hmm. things that happened uh, during that time. Uh, one uh, is that the uh, nation stopped circumcising the males. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you know why they did that? Stop circumcising the but males? significant because that's a symbol of the covenant. It's a sign of the covenant. So no. they had concluded what? There's no covenant. They were no longer covenant. There's, yeah. no, there's no longer any covenant. Uh, we're not going to experience the covenant. So they stopped and, circumcising. And it's important to say they concluded that. God didn't say there is no longer covenant. No. They decided based on what they're seeing, this isn't happening. Right. And he says, see, it, it stands uh, all the time, mm -hmm. uh, which is, as we talked about, being angry and do not sin and the sticky wickets you're in. See, God promises, I'll get you to the covenant. I'm going to bless mm -hmm. you to make you a blessing. Come with me and let me resolve this. Mm -hmm. um, and trust me, don't, don't say ain't going to happen. Why bother? Uh, the covenant doesn't apply to me, right. which is what they concluded. And they said, we're not going. Okay. The next mm -hmm. thing that was interesting 
uh, is uh, they did Passover. And remember, the Passover mm-hmm. uh, was uh, they put blood on the on the uh, doorpost. Right. Uh, and when the angel of death came uh, to kill the firstborn of all the land, if you were covered with the blood, the sacrifice of the lamb, it passed mm-hmm. over over you. Um, mm. And God said, I want you to now do this as a memorial every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, do the Passover and remember the power that I used to get you to freedom and the supernatural right. that occurred and the fact that I saved you because of the blood. And of course, Jesus uh, in the upper room, mm-hmm. um, as they were doing Passover, what does he say? I'm the Passover. Right. Uh, and he now, and the reason they wanted to do every year, every year, so that when Jesus came, they understood it. Um, they understood and the by completion the way, of it. Yes. And Jesus tells us, uh, keep doing this mm-hmm. um, in, in a church. You know, keep doing this regularly in a church or in a body of have communion. And do Passover. Okay, so right. um, that was their instruction. They did it for one year, mm-hmm. and the next thirty-nine years they didn't. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Do you know why they they didn't do it? No, why is that? Well, uh, it's an interesting reason, uh, and that I is think that I do know this. they didn't <laughs> they didn't have they didn't have the substance for it. That uh, was in the promised land, right? Well, what the, they needed, what they was, needed in the was in the promised land because God, God expected them to go immediately. Um, right. And they were going to be able to fulfill having unleavened bread because all mm-hmm. he did was provide them with manna and quail, but there was no right. unleavened bread. Uh, and they, they didn't have any ability uh, to carry out the Passover. So they didn't have the material for it. They ran, right. out, ran out of the material. But had they gone to the promised land as planned, that would have been able to complete continue to complete what he was asking them yeah, to do. Yeah, it would have been, yeah. uh, I'm going to demonstrate the covenant to you, and um, and you'll keep circumcising as a sign, mm-hmm. and you'll do Passover because the material for the Passover is over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in the promise. Yeah. Uh, so that as we look at that uh, issue uh, of the fulfillment of all that I'm doing, God speaking, is in the promise. Mm-hmm. Uh, you coming across the Jordan with me to let me fulfill the promise and all these fantastic things are over there. Right. Um, and now if we really got that all by itself and we, and, and we in faith believe that mm-hmm. we would always go. Right. Like, why would I not go there? Because all the beautiful stuff is there. It's in mm-hmm. the promise. It's in the next thing. Um, it's not a static thing. Uh, it's not mm-hmm. my, my miserable life. And, uh, and so God says, um, you know, come with me. Uh, I invite you to. And they said no. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, uh, did God let him not go to the promised land? Yes. He's not going to trump their free will. They okay. chose not to. Okay, what did, what did he promise them? I'll give you the promised land. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, hope, hope everybody really catches that. Um, so that God issued the promise. Mm-hmm. They understood that promise. That wasn't the. It was it was theirs to step into. Right, right. Yeah, uh, and and it's what I call, as God gives you these promises, uh, it's um, uh, promised, uh, but not guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's potential, but not guaranteed. So for right. them, He said, "That's my promise." Mm-hmm. They all said no. We're not willing to go. We're going to stay in the flesh, which they did for 40 right. years. And God said, okay, um, I will allow you to walk around outside of my will. Okay, now this mm-hmm. answers something um, about people's viewpoints, uh, and that is this. People say, isn't everything God's will? Mm. Um, right. And by the way, this is where they've tried to rationalize uh, bad things, mm-hmm. uh, suffering, you know, death, uh, sickness, uh, things that businesses that don't work out well is, well, I guess that's God's will. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, I got to just accept it. And as people look at that in their life, they tend to think, in essence, God isn't that good because mm-hmm. everything that happens is God's will. And he said, actually, it's not. It's your willingness by faith to believe what I'm saying and, f- and I will mm-hmm. fulfill it. But to demonstrate that, 
you have to walk with me right. in, into the promise, into the fulfillment, because it's going to be very specific. So um, they had the promise, which was potential, but they never got to experience it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they wandered around living in misery for 40 years. And God didn't say, okay, I know you guys are struggling, so let's just go now. Um, I'll just force you to go now. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you have a heart to go? No. Do you have a heart to go? No. Okay. Uh, So as we look at God's will and we look at abiding, uh, it's at that purest level. Mm -hmm. Uh, We talked about be angry and do not sin. Uh, And you you got a problem with this. Uh, Well, you can read all about it. And there's promises in there. Right. But you can say, I don't think it's going to work. No, I'm not willing to go. No, I'm not going to abide. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be remaining in this problem that I have with anger and the relationship issues that are, are related to it. Never walking into what God has said is, how about right. if I give you freedom and I'll resolve all these issues? Mm-hmm. Well, what does that require? Abiding. Uh, and mm-hmm. what does that require? Faith. Uh, to go down the journey and say, I'm willing to go. And then secondly, knowing that God will fulfill the faith piece Mm -hmm. to say, I'll be the finisher and give you the faith to believe what I've just said. So Mm -hmm. you're really, the only thing you got to do is just have a heart to go. Um, And it's not even that you believe it up front Um, because I, most of the time, and that's in my personal experience, when he says these amazing promises, my first reaction is, boy, I, I don't see that working. Uh, he says, mm-hmm. yeah, I know. Uh, uh, but are you willing to go with me? You've heard what I said. Are you willing to let me finish that? And right. I'll, I'll be the finisher of, of faith. Um, and he says, if you, if you don't have a heart to go, I'm going to let you wander around, you know, your whole life. You can, and I, I know people that are living outside of God's will their whole life. Um, and they, of course, they blame, tend to blame God. I thought God was going to take care of all this stuff. He mm-hmm. says, I will, if you have a heart to go with me. And that's what the abiding is all about. So you remember abiding is in the relationship and I'm surrendering my will to his will and mm-hmm. letting him be king. And I'm letting him speak this rhema, these words, the power of these words and the fulfillment of these words you know, into, into my life. Um, so it's, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful, uh, picture. Uh, but also we need to remember that it's not, it's not something he forces on us. Right. Right. And just knowing to, um, you know, a lot of times I think our biggest struggles to step into the promises come with trusting Yeah. and, and needing to really step in and trust his father's heart and trust that he is good and I know you've said before on the podcast, and I love this, that we go to the word under with you know, looking at it, assuming, knowing this is true, not yeah. trying to disprove it, but right. knowing that what is there is truth. Yeah. And, and that's a starting point for trust with God. I think yeah. that's an important thing for people to remember is there, if they're struggling to trust him yes. and allowing him to grow that, is that right. the starting point yeah. there is trusting that his word is true. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that, you know, do you believe the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord mm-hmm. is right. okay. I, I believe it's true. I don't know how it's true, but I believe it's true. Yeah. Um, well, he gives us, you know, that example that um, I'll let you not. Uh, if you have a, if you have a heart not to, I'll let you not, and you'll be outside of my will. Mm-hmm. Um, but he gives us this great example of Abraham uh, to say, "Let me help you understand uh, the whole process." So, if you'll mm-hmm. go to uh, Romans chapter four uh, and read verses seventeen to twenty-one, this is being spoken by Paul of Abraham about this issue of faith. Okay. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope, he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He didn't weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Saren's womb. Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Yep. 
Okay, so he's uh, describing Abraham as a, mm-hmm. uh, a man of great faith. Um, mm-hmm. And we can, we'll go into some of that detail. But when you look at Abraham's life, and you, you look at the process of his life, would we, as he was going through, <laughs> through that process, would you, would you call him a man of great faith? No, in no. fact, that's always, I think that's such an interesting thing that he used Abraham. I'm glad he did. Yeah. But because, you know, he, he and Sarah decided to go to Hagar. Yeah. And because they weren't seeing the promise come true. So they took it upon themselves. And so, you know, it's, it's hard. You know, you have to kind of wrestle through, okay, so what is exactly, what does he mean when he says he was a man of faith and he stayed with the promise? So exactly. I know you're going to talk about that. Yeah. But. Um, Abraham tried to sell his wife twice. Uh, to different kings because he was afraid they were mm-hmm. going to kill him. Um, so he said, yeah, she's my sister. You can have her, uh, which, by the way, God prevented. Um, right. Uh, so he wasn't faithful in that. Uh, and then, you know, as he's getting older, um, they decide in the flesh, well, isn't it? Now, this is important to understand this. Isn't it a good idea that we just go have a baby with Hagar? Right. Because uh, the promise was you'll be a father of many nations. And they weren't seeing logically how that was going to happen. Right, right. As far as they were concerned, it, it, wasn't, it, happening it wasn't in happening. their mind. So I, yeah. guess, I guess I'll go, I'll go do it on my own. Isn't I'll that, isn't that a good idea? i promise happen. Okay, yeah. now two things important about that. Um, they decided it. Did they go to God and ask him? No. No. Uh, see, they were in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I've decided... Isn't this a good idea? Um, I, and they would even say, if you were talking to them, hey, I did this because God promised me this. Right. Um, so I guess since it ain't happening, we need to do it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they have uh, Ishmael. Uh, by the way, Ishmael is the Arabs and uh, uh, the, not the son of promise. And right. uh, uh, Isaac is the son of promise, Israel. Uh, and they're, they're, they're still competing uh, right. with each other uh, because of it. Uh, but... God didn't say, I'm going to block you. I'm going to force mm-hmm. you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that you don't do this, this thing that isn't right. He just said, if that's, if that's where you are and you don't mm-hmm. have a heart to come and seek me, I'm not stopping your consequence of what you're doing. Uh, right. So they have, they have Ishmael. Uh, and then um, later, uh, actually, God says, uh, hey, by the way, that that's not the son of promise, right? Um, you what you did wasn't wasn't uh, you sinned because you're in the flesh, mm-hmm. uh, and that's not the son of promise. And here's <laughs> here's what Abraham says, and you can read this in uh, in Genesis. Uh, he says, "Well, look, since I already have him, mm-hmm. why don't you just make him the son of the promise?" <laughs> okay, how many times do we do that? Yeah. Though? You know, oh yeah. God, I've I've already done this. Now, will you bless it? Yeah, yeah. Hey, by the way, uh, uh, we can short circuit all this because if you just look at what's here, hey, he's already my son. Right. Just just make him the son of promise. And God God says no. Uh, you got to actually put him out. Um, mm-hmm. He's not the son of promise. Um, okay, so uh, it says that um, at that moment, uh, Abraham said he believed God. Mm-hmm. Um, who uh, can speak things that don't exist into existence, mm-hmm. can raise things that are dead into living things, the, the ashes of our life. Right. Uh, and he said, uh, against hope, mm-hmm. in hope, he believed. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so we'll talk about how did that happen. Uh, because he said, I tried with, with uh, Ishmael, and that didn't work. But by now, he says, we're too old. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sarah is already barren she's past menopause Mm -hmm. and and my physical ability to create sperm is gone Uh, so this ain't this ain't this this can't happen it's not going to happen right Um, and God said it can happen because of my supernatural work Mm -hmm. and I will fulfill my promise Um, and he says now are you against hope there's Mm -hmm. no shot here in hope that mm-hmm. what God said, he said, okay, I'm willing to believe it. Okay, now, um, we know that he, he uh, is called by Paul a man of faith. Right. What was the one thing that he did 
all the way from the beginning and all these mistakes that he made. But what's one good thing he did all the way through? He continued coming back. He stayed with God in the midst of it. He kept, Even when he messed up, he yeah, had see, a repentant heart and he came right back. He kept dialoguing mm -hmm. with God even after he had made mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and God would say that, nope, what you did wasn't right. But it doesn't negate my ability to deliver you the promise if you have a heart to go. Because remember, right. I'm the finisher, I'm the author and finisher mm -hmm. of faith. Um, I'll, do, I'll take you to faith. Uh, Isn't there so much encouragement in that? Uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. When you hear that. <laughs> yeah. and, and so he's really showing us with Abraham, which I think why Paul wrote it, is... Um, yeah, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. going to you're going to tend to do things on your own. But through the whole process, if you stay with me, mm -hmm. I'll get you there. Because uh, right. he, he said uh, against hope in hope, he believed he had faith. Mm -hmm. um, and then in verse uh, 21, uh, actually read that again, because uh, it's a really important statement about the process. Um, verse 21. Yeah says, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Yeah. So uh, what happened there? Um, persuaded. The word there is persuaded. Mm -hmm. He was persuaded that what God spoke, he could fulfill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you think about that, um, God basically understands us mm -hmm. and says, I'm going to speak things and you're not going to just automatically say, sure, I mm -hmm. believe it. He says, I'm going to have to persuade you. Mm. Are you willing to let me persuade you? Uh, and that's what he says about Abraham. He was persuaded uh, and mm. fully convinced that what God spoke, he would fulfill. Well, we know it took time mm -hmm. because he has lots of evidence where he didn't believe it. Right. And, and he made right. mistakes. But what did he do? I'm willing to be persuaded um, yeah. and, stay, and stay with it. Um, okay, now. Uh, as I'm helping people with this, um, we have a great example in the New Testament. Uh, and they're, they're the disciples. Mm -hmm. uh, when Jesus came to them, he basically just said, the kingdom of God is here. Come and follow me. Mm -hmm. They said, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. So he starts doing these miracles. Mm -hmm. uh, and supernatural stuff all the time, by the way, uh, which is which is supposed to be a normal piece of our life, and we'll get into that in a different topic. Uh, but um, they start experiencing that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, throughout the Gospels, even up until the upper room, uh, which is now three years later, Jesus was constantly saying to them, O ye of what? Of little faith. Little faith. <laughs> you know, um, how is it with your experiencing everything that I've been persuading you with, mm -hmm. that you still struggle with this. Right. Uh, and he said, I understand that. Uh, and all I'm asking you to do uh, is let me, let me do the work of finishing it, persuading you that what I say is going to occur and be real so that after Pentecost, they then moved into a different place where if God said it, you know, I believe it. Now they had right. struggled. They still had struggled with that, uh, and it wasn't necessarily immediate. But they understood the process, and right. that was okay. This one seems pretty tough. Uh, this promise seems too big for me, but um, I'm willing to be persuaded mm -hmm. uh, and stay with it. And the disciples, also, we would look at them and say it took them three years and longer. Mm -hmm. Uh, they had to be fully persuaded, and that's the heart of God. Is mm -hmm. that see, He's not saying to you, "Okay, you got to learn this faith, and you got to get it immediately." Is well, just just walk with me. Let me persuade you. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember, the persuasion is in things happening. Right. That you got this promise, you did say, "Okay, I believe that," and then it happened. And he said, mm -hmm. "Do you do you see uh, how fantastic that is?" And then you get you get confidence, you get excitement. By the way, we already, we already know something about this. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. Our life is going to be a constant walk of new challenges. Right. Um, and he's going to push our faith all the time. You know, hey, right. I'm going to do this great thing. Do you believe it? Eh, not really. Okay, great. Stay mm -hmm. with me. Let me persuade you. I'll finish it to take you to faith. The burden is on me, not you. The only thing you got to do 
like Abraham, stay like Abraham, me. it's just <laughs> abide with me, stay with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and Abraham's a great example of that, that because he, <laughs> uh, he failed a lot, uh, but mm-hmm. but he stayed he stayed with him um, and yeah. became the father of many nations. So, um, and I love even as you're talking about that that you know in that process as he's finishing, he is completing that faith. Um, he knows our hearts so well. Yeah. And knows how to personally persuade us. Yes. You know, knows what we need to see, think, feel, and hear in order to take that next step of faith, in order to to layer that on so that we become more confident in following him and more confident in trusting the promise. And he can do that in such personal ways uh, that it amazes me all the time as I watch him do it. Yeah, it really does. Um, So that if you um, look at, uh, the two things that are important in this aspect of abiding is, okay, what are you saying to me? Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, I will do this. I will deliver this. This truth will be fulfilled in mm-hmm. you. Um, then he said, there's a whole process of faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, well, I got to abide in the word. I got to stay with it. And, it, and, and you use the word authenticity. Um, that's how you do it. It's, right. I really don't believe this yet. I really struggle with this. Um, he says, I understand. Mm-hmm. Dialogue with me. Talk to me. Let me get my words into your heart that you begin to see that it's true and you then go to faith right? Um, and believe it. Uh, and he said, see, my joy, God speaking, is to be with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always by giving you promises that I will fulfill and then having you go to faith, which requires me to do it. I mean, mm-hmm. think, think how beautiful that is. Yeah, it is. And it's an amazing relationship that he builds with us and that he desires for us. That was even this morning when I was talking with, um, in our ladies group, just talking about um, the sweetness of wherever he has each of us at. Yeah. And everybody's facing different things and has different promises or different hopes that they're still asking God for what the promise is and all of these things. But each one of those is an invitation to walk with him. Right. Each one of them. Yep. So um, I've thrown up on the screen here that if you have questions um, about this aspect of faith, promises, um, the I can see where I failed, uh, does that mean I'm, I'm out, um, what happens next? Uh, you might have lots of questions about this, mm-hmm. so we'd love for you to send them in. Uh, you can do it on the YouTube, on the comment section, or on podcast. You can email us at questions at afjministry.com, mm-hmm. questions at afjministry.com, uh, and we'd love to receive them, and we'll pick them up uh, and start to answer these questions for you. And uh, uh, we could even be in the middle of some topics that we, you know, we have planned to give, but uh, God is the one that takes us down these great paths, right, and we, and we right. want this to become personal to you. So um, we've had a lot of, lot of personal questions, and uh, we, we really enjoy it. We've even emailed a few back with some specifics of, in this case, mm-hmm. this is where you would need to go in the Word because uh, they wanted to hear some things. So, um, right. And it's great to hear, even in those emails that have come back and forth, I think of one in particular who was sharing with us um, his not feeling like he wasn't hearing from God. And then he sends an email and he tells us all of the things that God was saying. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, do, do you see it? Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. he was hearing so much and it was just so beautiful. He, he had a heart to hear. Right. And then you were able to guide him where to go next yeah. to continue on with what yeah. he was revealing to him. It was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, and it, it, was it really is really neat to watch. It is always fun when uh, I'm not sure I'm hearing and then they talk and they say, uh, actually, you are hearing. <laughs> um, and rejoice at that, you know. Uh, yes, understand that yes. the God of the universe is talking to you, you know. So, uh, well, we've enjoyed this week uh, as we've talked about uh, faith and abiding. And we'll, we'll, we're going to talk a little bit more about the process of uh, how does he persuade us, uh, mm-hmm. which is the work of the Holy Spirit. So we'll talk a little bit about that uh, next week. And uh, we enjoyed Mike uh, being on. and uh, And I thought... Even though it's a heavy topic, we had a great discussion mm-hmm. about, you know, uh, be angry and do not sin. Right. Uh, and pray that that has stimulated uh, lots of thought and lots of interest in, uh, uh, for me, uh, I have this situation and I really need to know and, and I'd like to abide mm-hmm. with him to let me uh, start to live this out. And we're, and we're here to help you. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Send in, if you, if you need personal help on that, send an email and, um, and let, let us send you to some scriptures that God will just begin to minister in that because he wants freedom for you. Yep. Yep. So Kathy, uh, have a great weekend and uh, it was good, uh, good being together this week and we'll look forward to uh, 
where God will take us next week. Sounds great. (laughs) See you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.